Roman Reigns versus Jay Uso for the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship and title of Head of the Table in Tribal Combat. Was this actually Tribal Combat? Is Solo Sokoa the next head of the table? Why did Jimmy betray Jay? And why are all of Roman's wins the same? What's good, y'all? It's Jay. Welcome to Jag Talk with Jay Athletic Gaming. Well, to tackle the first question, was this actually Tribal Combat? So when I first heard of this match, I honestly didn't think much of it when they called it Tribal Combat other than this is going to be a no disqualification match. I already naturally expected there to be interference and I, yeah, I didn't really think nothing of it. I didn't really think there was going to be anything tribal about it, anything significant to their culture. Um, but the more I looked into it and the more I seen people online on Twitter, which is now X talking about the rules of the match the apparent rules online said that there was not supposed to be any interference right this is supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup where nobody in the family could come into play so solo sokoa should not be able to come into play jamie uso should not be able to come into play and i didn't really consider that but you know just the way roman's matches go i just automatically assume now i listened to this podcast the busted open podcast and they made a good point it has bully ray on it and he said what if tribal combat to us was them actually having like the traditional things for the family? I don't know what whatever's traditional to them. I don't know if you know when Jimmy and Jay used to come out as a tag team when they first started, they used to do their dance for the tribe, right? Something like that. Um, probably something like they said, having the elders there, either having the elders there, like when Roman's father presented him with the Ula Fala when he beat Jay three years ago at Hell in a Cell or have Rikishi to be there to make sure that the rules of tribal combat are upheld. This is what they said on the podcast, and I never actually thought about it. And they said, you know, what if during this interference by Solo, you know, Rikishi sees this happen and he's in disapproval of it and he shakes his head and he walks out and he's just like, you know, he's going to go report to the elders and let them know tribal combat was not upheld. So therefore, Roman will no longer be the head of the table or something of that nature. Now, if they would have had it be something like that, I admit that would be pretty interesting. Um, now, hearing that, I kind of wish that they did go that route. It would have made it much more like it would just made it much different than any normal match. It would have been something we never seen before. And it would have been a new thing that they could have added to the Bloodline story that could solidify as the best thing going down um, in wrestling television right now. Right. So. Was that actually tribal combat? Now that I've heard that, the answer I think is no. It was a no disqualification match, a glorified one. And, you know, with interferences as usual, they just use the title to kind of market the match. So let me know what you guys think about that. The next is, is Solo Sokoa the next head of the table? I asked this because during the match, if you saw it, Roman goes to spear and spike with Solo on Jay. And then he accidentally spears Solo when Jay gets out of the way, right? And then Solo looks at Roman. He's pretty mad about the whole interaction. And it's clear that, you know, they're, they're creating a small riff, you know, gradually between Solo and Roman. And they're eventually probably going to lead up to a match like that or something for the title. Because also when I went to the show on MSG, you know, Solo was holding the Ula Fala and he was thinking about putting it on for himself. Um, obviously, they like peaked and they was like teased at that um at that dispute but right now they're not pushing forward with it but they're just leaving little teasers here and there i think solo does have what it takes to become the next head of the table i see it more in him than i do in jay and jimmy like he's just so dominant and he's he's a silent he's a silent guy right and he's just powerful he could be something like what brock lesnar was when he had paul Heyman. so yeah solo might be the next undisputed champion it's not time yet but i do see that for him in the future now, as far as why did Jimmy betray Jay, I'm going to get more into this in a future video because I want to talk about the entire SmackDown segment, which I saw that they had. But my initial thought and reaction was Jimmy betrays Jay because he is jealous of him, right? He's just jealous of him. He's jealous that Jay is getting all these, this attention. This is his third main event against Roman. He's trying to be the head of the table. What's going to happen when the two twin brothers are not seen as equals anymore? He just doesn't want his brother to have power. And that was my immediate thought, immediate reaction. And for people asking, why would he, you know, help Roman when he's the one who started this riff with Roman? Well, the idea behind that would be maybe he started the riff with Roman 
because he wanted to create that split between Jay and Roman so he could possibly sneak in to become the right hand man. Now, what, from what I've seen on SmackDown, like I said, I'll talk about later. That's not the route they were going with it, but those were my initial thoughts. And my last point of this whole video is why are all of Roman's wins the same? So for me, Roman Reigns is my favorite wrestler, like by far. He is the reason that I'm making this video right now. He's the reason I started watching WWE again. So a lot of my points will be biased when it comes to Roman, right? But I will say one thing I, I, I don't like, even though I did want Roman to win this match, I very much so want him to win this match. I want him to continue breaking records. But what I don't like is that they constantly have people interfere within his matches when at the beginning of his title reign, when he faced Jay in the first two matches, he was doing everything on his own. He was winning these matches on his own, and he just seemed a dominant champion. And I want him to have that kind of, you know, that, that kind of title on him, that kind of um, distinction about him, that he's just a dominant champion, even as a heel. Gunther is a heel, but he is still a dominant champion. He doesn't need to cheat in order to win his matches. So I kind of wish they would bring that back with Roman. The last time that Roman actually won a match without any interference was when he fought Matt Riddle on SmackDown, which is God knows how long ago. So I do wish that, you know, Roman does continue to win, but that they kind of cut down on the shortcuts that he gets to his W's and that they kind of just let him be great, let him be a champion and, you know, just let him be dominant. So maybe people won't have as much of a problem with, with his run as they have been having. That's it for the video, guys. For more sports gaming and sports discussions, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you on the next one.